Our long-standing CCU product has finally been upgraded to Unisketch OS and that means we have had a chance to clean up the interface quite a bit and bring it into accord with the RCP and other products we have uh, running on that platform. So let's take a look at how this has affected the product. Much of how it works is the same, but there are some things that has been optimized. So um, if we look at the CCU here, we have still the camera selector. And as I press any of these buttons, I have uh, now selected camera one. I can see it uh, from the button lid, of course, but also in the display. You can still um, select multiple cameras. So as you hold these buttons down, you will now address camera one, two, and four uh, by doing this. And then as you move any of these dials, you will adjust um, that parameter for all selected cameras. Now you can see I adjust iris and uh, you'll see here in the top of the picture, you see just some of the, um, uh, the my monitor. I just included the bottom of it so you can see more details on the displays, but you can still see some settings uh, from the camera if you want. But you can see that I'm adjusting iris maybe, but I am. Right, so now I'm just selecting one camera. So we still have an iris dial here. We still have the possibility of uh, going into course and find mode. So that's basically how quickly it's moving. That's um, done by pressing the encoder. And uh, then we also have a limiter over here, which we can use to limit the range. So I can uh, set a, a top range. Now it's uh, uh, 72, uh, so I can't go over 72. On the left side, we have lift Y, which is the master black. And uh, it's also, it has been um, reduced in the step size and you see we have now a much higher resolution of the numbers shown in all the displays for lift Y, lift R, G and B. So uh, you have confidence about the, the last decimals in, in the numbers. It also means that you can have much finer adjustments that lends themselves better to live adjustments so you don't see uh, really jumpy uh, changes to the values. So we still have uh, uh, lift, Y RGB when we change on the menu here uh, you go to gamma Y RGB gain RGB and uh, now we have uh, contrast saturation hue and uh, something called push data so uh, contrast of course is adjusting the contrast same uh, saturation saturation and so forth I'm not gonna show you that much uh, the push data is interesting because this function is um, if you uh, if you have a camera that has a lot of settings in it, and this is related to how the protocol works. So it's a one-way protocol that uh, sends data to the camera, but we, we don't know uh, what data is in the camera already. So um, when you begin to adjust iris, and if the camera is out of sync with the setting you're se sending, you may experience a jump in the iris. So if you want, uh, when, when you boot things up, to push all data in the CCU out to the cameras once and for all, you can use the push data trigger function. That will basically take all the settings in the CCU and move out to the camera uh, with a single uh, press of, uh, of, that, of that button, or you can trigger it with the encoder. So we can move to uh, the camera menu. And there you have sensor gain, shutter speed, um, uh, white balance adjustments. Um, those are all easy to see. You can see the shutter speed in, in the display here, how it's, uh, it's changing in the camera. Uh, if I select camera two, you'll see I'm not changing the shutter speed at all for, for camera one, because this is camera one, it's just the same. Go back to camera one, it's changing. If I select camera one and camera two, then you'll see the value is still changing because I am in fact uh, sending shutter speed values to both camera one and camera two. Um, all right, so uh, in I also have focus and uh, focus of course um, is uh, is useful if you if you want to set focus for uh, for the picture so you have absolute focus values here and uh, if you go to the next menu where you have um, uh, a custom setup you have a uh, zoom and zoom is an absolute zoom so as you move this value from zero to 100%, you can, um, it's not really easy to see, but if I move everything down a little bit, you may be able to see it here. I'm basically zooming into the picture by, uh, to, to the position, now it's 35%. I could go all the way up to 100% like this. And then of course I could go back and, and focus my camera. Uh, so it's in focus also. And move the sensor gain up maybe a little bit. Okay, so that's basically the new CCU. And uh, if we turn our um, attention over to um, 
the, the the screen, you will see it's connected to the Skyhoy firmware updater app. You can also see the typical Unisketch output in the serial monitor I've opened here. So when you reset the device, you you will see that it's recognized as the uh, CCU and um, showing some version numbers and so forth uh, while it's booting. Now, um, what I'd wanted to show is, uh, or just highlight is, why do you want the CCU on uh, the Unisketch platform? Well, you, you really want that because when you want to um, reconfigure how, for instance, the menu system is, is made, or if you want to exclude settings people should not mess with, or if you want to control how the, by the way, GPIO option on the CCU is uh, linked up to external devices like monitors, or if you want to take in CCU signals for setting up tally, you can all do this in the Unisketch universe. So for instance, uh, you can see with the GPIO option, I would be able to take um, GPI triggers into the CCU and then insert tally data on the uh, output. So as an example, I would then press in nine, and then I would simply go to um, cam control tally, and then I would say um, if, if input number nine is, is triggered, then I want to have red tally on the output like that. And then you could easily copy that to the next one and then say, this is camera two and so forth and hook that up to your production switcher system. So that's just one example of, of what you could do here. Uh, of course, if you rather like to the camera selector to uh, hook that up with the GPI outputs, you could also uh, say that I want um, the camera selector, when I press camera one here, I want to set an internal flag that is reflected on a relay on the GPI output. So we could set this one up and say this relay should reflect flag number uh, zero uh, or flag number 10 in the system. And, uh, and then we would simply say the button number one, when I select this camera, I also want, apart from putting this into the memory group, I also want to set um, a flag we call number 10 in the memory. And then uh, by doing this, uh, we should probably make it a hold down, then uh, we will have relay flipping each time, um, actually toggle, we will have a relay flipping as we are uh, selecting uh, cameras. Okay, so that's some of the flexibility you have out of the box. And of course you can always add devices. So if you want the CCU to do something else, you can add c uh, device cores so it can communicate directly over IP with routers and switches. It could uh, control robotic cameras instead of um, Blackmagic cameras using the SDI output and so forth.